What is up, chefs, foodies, and students? Welcome to Everybody Knows. I'm Anders. I'm so glad you're here. Let's get started. Today we are talking about the ingredient of honeysuckle flour. Now, this ingredient it comes from a variety of places around the world in terms of where it originated and currently isn't terribly well known in many or any cuisines, although it is definitely able to be used in cooking and flavoring. If you're investigating origins and cultures, be sure to research the time period as well since many foods are brought to cultures from elsewhere or developed over time. In terms of this specific honeysuckle, uh, it is a non-toxic variety, meaning that you can consume parts of it, although you're probably not actually going to consume the flour. You're probably going to flavor things with the aroma. Um, and there are probably some varieties of honeysuckle that are toxic, so do your research first. This is the common, I think, called orange honeysuckle, although the color of the flowers vary from orange to yellow to white. It's more common in, the, uh, in North America, um, and it's borderline invasive in some places, so it is not hard to find, but just be sure you have a species that is non-toxic. When we look at this ingredient, what we are expecting to see are nice, vibrant flowers and maybe some that have yet to emerge. We don't want to see any browning or curling of the flowers. That means that they are past their prime. We should see all of the reproductive parts of the flowers sticking out. Um, if they are droopy at all, it means that the plant is in need of water or could be um, being attacked by insects and things. And so just have a look for nice, um, vibrant, healthy looking flowers. The smell is very nostalgic to me, so it's kind of otherworldly, but it's definitely like a spring summer kind of um, aroma. Oh my God, that's so good. It's just a nice, bright floral aroma and it's strong. Uh, when you walk past a bush that's in full bloom, uh, there is no mistaking it, there is no avoiding it. It is just a strong, bright, floral aroma. Wonderful. Let's have a quick look at our aroma wheel. So within the wheel, we are going to be looking within the category of vegetative towards floral. And that's where we're going to find most of our actual flowers. And so we can see here, uh, we have some of our muskier and then into muted and into bright category flowers. And so we're gonna be looking uh, right here at the bottom of bright. And honeysuckle is actually our last stop on the way into uh, the tea category. And so honeysuckle and jasmine tea are placed very close together. And then honeysuckle leads us into orange blossom, which is another bright aroma that is commonly used to flavor water. That's something that you would likely find in, uh, in a either Asian market or probably even um, in the world cuisine section of a normal supermarket, you would find orange blossom water. But honeysuckle uh, is not a commonly found item in markets. And so, uh, but I, I do think uh, orange blossom and honeysuckle are similar enough and vice versa with jasmine. It's a nice segue into the tea category. And so um, I think this organization makes sense. Let me know if you disagree, I would love to hear. I think in terms of using honeysuckle, it's similar to what I've said for lilac, which is to basically extract the flavor using either sugar. I don't, I don't think this would boil as a tea very nicely. You can try it. I think it would be more successful using the sugar extraction method. Um, and I don't know how it fares through a cooking process. I assume it mellows even more than it already would be in sugar. Something I'm interested in trying is actually to make a syrup out of it and then create a shaved ice. Uh, so actually freezing it and then creating sort of like um, a honeysuckle snow cone, if you will, uh, from that concentrate. And uh, we'll see how that goes, but I'm excited about it. One other thing that you can do, and this is a very non, well, it could be a culinary thing. I didn't even think of that. This could be a, uh, an experience component um, for a dish if you are in a, an elevated cuisine restaurant and you want some interaction. But basically, this is a technique that you might already know. And if you don't, you gotta try this. You gotta find a flower that's ready. You pick it 
and this little end here has a green nub but what you do is carefully pinch with your fingernail you're trying to separate the green part from the rest of the flower tube and as you do you will be able to pull one of these uh, reproductive parts of the plant through and you will end up with this tiny bead of essentially nectar that you can then just kind of sip off with your with your tongue and it's like the tiniest drop of just divine honeysuckle nectar and as a kid you're like oh I want a jar full of that stuff best of luck see you in 10 years um, but yeah no it's just sort of a fun kind of pick and sip treat that the plant offers in terms of its structure and how how it, that can be done um, highly encourage you to give that a try if you've never done that it's kind of one of those like summer delights that is you know it's like a fleeting moment but um, this you could put fresh honeysuckle on a table guests could be uh, invited to do that um, you could definitely incorporate that into a, a meal experience and that about wraps it up so here's what I want you to do I want you to think about this ingredient as you're cooking or eating and as well as the words that we use to describe it have you ever used this ingredient successfully in a way that you think yeah that was like so good um, what was it I want to know I want to hear about it and do you agree or disagree with what I've shared with you today um, what ingredient should we look at next any of the answers to those questions throw them in the comments I would absolutely love to read them I hope this video made sense and got you thinking about the ingredient of honeysuckle. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to help me get an ingredient to feature in a future video, please send me an email or private message. And if you would like to join the Food Aroma Nerdery, go ahead and subscribe and you will see all of my latest videos. And if you're interested in getting either a poster or digital copy of this aroma wheel that we use, have a look in the description for links. Thanks so much. Bye.